I found the top 10 highest paying work from home jobs, and I've got a nice combination of entry level jobs, mid level jobs, and even one or two higher level jobs. So it's gonna be good for just about anybody watching this video. Ready? Ready. And I've got some on here that you've probably never heard of, such as the first one on the list, number 10, which is going to be social listening analyst. Now, this is a very interesting, relatively new position that kind of combines data analytics skills with marketing skills. And basically, you're gonna be analyzing things like online conversations, social media trends, and customer sentiments to provide valuable insights and recommendations to businesses. And it's almost like being a modern day anthropologist, except you're studying the culture in real time as things are changing. And you're studying the culture specifically to make business related decisions. And I kind of like this quote where it says, a brand is no longer what we tell the consumer it is, it is what consumers tell each other it is. And the customer is always right. Now, social listening analysts make about $60,000 a year. And this is one of those careers that's so new that you do not need to have a college degree or previous experience to get into it. But it definitely does help to have a good portfolio and certificates and certifications are also good too. Some of the skills you might need for this position are gonna be analytical skills, of course, a deep understanding of social media platforms and the ability to interpret data and trends. Some of the pros of this one are you have an opportunity to work in a bunch of different industries for a bunch of different types of businesses and brands and it's a really exciting role that's sort of a intersection between psychology and kind of social sciences in general and marketing as well as data analytics. Some of the cons of this one is the digital landscape is constantly evolving so you have to stay up to date with the latest trends and tools and dealing with large volumes of data and extracting insights can be very challenging. So overall this is a really interesting new one that I found. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10 opportunity score. The next one on the list is going to be a compliance analyst and basically in this role, you're going to be making sure that your company complies with laws, regulations, and industry standards. And compliance analysts make about $69,000 a year. Now, you don't need a college degree to get into this position. In some positions, they will prefer people who have college degrees. It definitely does help to get a certification such as CCEP, and it also helps if you've already been working in whatever industry you're applying for that role in. So some of the skills you might need for this position are, of course, a great attention to detail, a grasp of regulatory frameworks, and the ability to navigate legal jargon. Some of the pros here are you have lucrative salary potential, you're gonna be helping companies mitigate risks, and you're gonna make a positive impact by ensuring ethical business practices. Some of the cons here are it requires deep knowledge of laws and regulations, it can involve high pressure situations, and there is a constant need to stay up to date with changing compliance standards. So overall, this is a pretty good one. I'm going to give it an opportunity score of 8.5 out of 10. The next one on the list is going to be an operations analyst. And this is basically a combination of an operations related role with a data analysis type role. And you're going to be using data analysis and problem solving skills to optimize business processes, improve efficiency, and drive strategic strategic decision making. And I kind of like this quote about data. It's that data is the new oil. It's valuable, but if unrefined, it cannot really be used. And operation analysts make about $73,000 a year. Now, some of the skills you might need for this are, of course, strong data analysis abilities, proficiency in data analysis tools, and a solid understanding of business operations. Now, this is a position where typically you are going to need previous experience, but you don't necessarily have to have experience in these related roles. You can supplement that with a good portfolio, self-teaching, and also some good certificates. So some of the pros here are desirable salary, flexibility without sacrificing income, and the fun and fulfilling feeling of making businesses more efficient. Some of the cons here are it requires strong analytical and problem-solving skills, it can involve working under pressure and tight deadlines, and continuous learning to stay up to date with industry trends and tools is required. So because of the fact it's a little bit harder to get into this one, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10 opportunity score. The next one on the list is going to be IT project manager. And basically, this is a combination of IT information technology skills with project management skills. And you see a lot of these high paying jobs do have a combination of two very valuable skills. And basically, you're going to be overseeing the planning and execution of technology related projects. And you're going to be ensuring that they meet the business goals, stay within budget, and they're completed on time. And project managers in general make about $97,000 a year. And typically, IT project managers are going to make a little bit more than that. So some of the skills you're going to need for this are going to be strong leadership abilities, excellent communication skills, and technical knowledge. Now, the most most common path to get into this position is getting a college degree, then moving into some type of IT related career, and then moving into IT project management. But with that being said, it is possible to get into this position without a college degree, but typically you are going to have to have some previous experience.
states. Also, it's a good idea to get a certification such as the PMP. Now, the pros here are going to be very lucrative salary and potential for career growth, the ability to work remote and enjoy a flexible schedule, and it's going to be exciting and dynamic work. Some of the cons here are you have to navigate the complex and ever-changing technology landscape, you have to balance multiple projects and stakeholders' expectations, and there is potential for high-pressure situations and tight deadlines because you are in a leadership role. But overall, this is a really good one, super valuable skill set. I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10 opportunity score. And by the way, the best way to get in IT, especially if you don't have a college degree and you don't want to have a college degree and you have no previous experience, is in my opinion, to take my friend Josh's IT help desk course. Course. IT Help Desk is the easiest way to get an entry level job in the technology industry, in my opinion. And Josh does actually have a free training, which I'll put down in the description as well as the pinned comment that tells you all about IT Help Desk and shows you how you can get into it. He also has an interactive cohort experience where you can take this with a bunch of other people and they show you exactly how to get into an IT Help Desk role and you have more support. And I'll put that down in the description as well as the pinned comment. The next one on the list is going to be an ethical hacker. And basically, this is a position where you actually try to hack companies, but you do it in an ethical way with their permission. Oh, boy, I'm good. Right, so you're going to go into a company, you're gonna see what all their vulnerabilities are, you're gonna try to hack them, and if you're able to, of course, you're gonna help them to shore up those vulnerabilities. And this is actually a career that's been around, surprisingly, since the 1960s. And this is when the US government started hiring people to make sure they don't have vulnerabilities in their systems. News, gentlemen, I found our hacker. And ethical hackers can make about $97,000 a year. Now, when it comes to the skills for this one, obviously, you're gonna to have to have strong technical knowledge, great problem-solving abilities, attention to detail and a passion for cybersecurity. Now, you don't technically have to have a college degree, previous experience, anything like that, but you do have to have a very, very high level of skill. So this is not something you can get into in like the next three to six months, most likely, unless you're already very good when it comes to software development or cybersecurity in the first place. But with that being said, there's certain certifications such as CEH or OSCP that will definitely help you to land a job. Now, some of the pros of this one are it's pretty cool to be a hacker and you get the opportunity to play a vital role in securing digital infrastructure. Some of the cons of this one are, of course, you have to stay constantly up to date on the ever evolving cybersecurity threats that are out there, and you have the responsibility of protecting sensitive information. So this can be a high pressure role. But overall, this is a really good one. I'm gonna give it an opportunity score of 8.5 out of 10. The next one on the list is going to be a brand manager. And this is a type of marketing role that doesn't necessarily focus more on conversions, sales, revenue, that sort of thing, but it actually focuses more on creating and maintaining a brand image, increasing brand awareness and driving consumer trust and loyalty, right? Because if you're able to establish a very strong brand with a generation of people, for instance, like let's say you're making a movie or something, or you're making a bunch of action figures with a younger generation in mind, maybe you don't make as much money on the front end, but you could potentially make way more money on the back end down the line. You can just look at huge franchises like Star Wars, for instance, to see how lucrative this can be. Disney is making billions and billions of dollars from Star Wars, but the movies do kind of suck. How dare you call me that? So this is one of those positions where you may not see a huge ROI right away, but down the line in the long run, it can make a massive difference. You know, Coca-Cola is an incredibly recognizable brand. So is Star Wars. And brand managers make about $96,000 a year. So some of the skills you're gonna need here are a strong understanding of marketing principles, excellent communication, and creativity related skills. Now, typically people who go into these types of positions do have a college degree, and typically they are gonna have some experience in a lower level marketing position first as well. But with that being said, it's not impossible to get into these positions without a college degree. And things kind of are trending in that direction, so it's becoming easier and easier. Some of the pros here are it's an exciting and dynamic work in the world of marketing and branding. You have an opportunity to work with well-known brands and shape their identity, and you have the potential for high earnings and career growth. Some of the cons here are it requires strong strategic thinking and creative skills. It can involve intense competition and pressure to deliver results, and you do have to continuously learn to stay Stay ahead of the ever-evolving marketing landscape. But overall, I'll give this one an 8 out of 10 opportunity score. The next one on the list is going to be a clinical trial manager. And I wanted to put this one in here just to showcase 
that there are a lot of jobs out there that you think would probably never be able to be done remotely, but in reality, they actually do have opportunities. And basically, you're responsible for the overseeing and execution of clinical trials. And there are remote opportunities for this position, surprisingly enough. So I like to include one or two of these on the list just to kind of open people's minds up because there's a lot of people who are watching this and thinking, there's no way I could ever do my job remotely. When in reality, there's a lot of opportunities for remote jobs. You might not be able to do 100% of your job, but you could do like 80% of it remotely. And then you can find a job where you just do that 80%. And there's a lot of random niche jobs like this in the healthcare field specifically, that you should definitely look into. And clinical trial managers make about $109,000 a year. Some of the skills you need in this position are strong organizational skills, attention to detail, the ability to navigate complex regulations, and of course, experience in clinical research or a related field. For this one, you would of course have to have at the bare minimum, a bachelor's degree, and in many cases, a master's. And this would be in something like clinical research or a health related degree. And also previous experience would be needed as well. But like I said, I included this one as sort of a surprising job that you probably wouldn't think can actually be done remotely. So always use your creativity and check to see if your job can actually be done remotely. Pros here are opportunity to contribute to medical research, high earning potential and job stability, and the flexibility to work from home and manage trials remotely. Some of the cons here are you have to deal with strict regulations, there's high levels of responsibility, and you have to collaborate remotely with diverse teams and manage communication effectively, which can be hard in these types of positions. But overall, I'm going to give this one an opportunity score of 7 out of 10. The next one on the list is going to be a full stack engineer. And this is an engineer that can do coding on the front end as well as the back end. And front end is basically what you see as the consumer if you're looking at a website or a piece of software. And the back end is everything that happens behind the scenes. And typically that's more analytical and can be a little more tough. And full stack engineers make $141,000 a year. Some of the skills you would need for this are proficiency in both front end and back end technologies. So things like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, as well as frameworks like React or Angular for the front end, and then languages like Python, Ruby, or Node.js for the back end. You're also going to have to have knowledge of databases, version control systems, and deployment platforms. So this is one of those careers where people get into it in just about every way you can imagine, all the way from zero experience, they don't even have a high school degree, and they just teach themselves code, all the way up to having a doctorate in computer science. So there's a million different ways to skin a cat here. Everyone is going to have their own opinion on what the best way to do it is. In reality, you just need to look it up yourself and figure out what the best option for you is. But at the end of the day, you do have to know your stuff, whether you have a college degree or you taught yourself. So some of the pros here are you're very versatile. So you have the ability to work in a bunch of different roles and it's an extremely in-demand skill. Some of the cons here are it's a super steep learning curve. You have to master both front end and back end technologies and that is incredibly difficult. And it also requires a bunch of multitasking. So overall, I'm gonna give this one an opportunity score of 9.5 out of 10. I think it's excellent. It's also very difficult, but if you can do it, this is a great one. The next one on the list is going to be a research engineer. And this is basically somebody who provides, you know, software engineering skills with scientific research skills. And research engineers make about $146,000 a year. So it really pays to have multiple super in-demand skills. So some of the skills you need for this are a background in scientific principles, proficiency in data analysis, and advanced problem solving abilities. Now, typically people are going to have to have a degree in something like engineering or computer science to get into this role. Some of the pros here are you get to do scientific research, which is exciting. You have the autonomy in conducting research from home, and you have the potential for intellectual growth and making a meaningful impact. Some of the cons here are it requires significant dedication, patience, and perseverance. It can involve long hours and intense intellectual challenges, and there is competition for research funding and opportunities. So overall, because of the fact that it is a pretty high barrier to entry, I'm going to give this one an opportunity score of 7.5 out of 10. The next one on the list is going to be a genetics counselor. So this is a really cool new career that's just emerged in the last few years. And basically, you're going to help individuals understand their unique genetic profile. And you're going to focus on understanding genetic risks. So for instance, there's some people out there that can eat terrible food their entire life, lots of sugar, etc. And it doesn't really affect their health all that much. There's other people out there that are going to get diabetes in their 20s if they do that. And you can know which one of those camps you stand in by understanding your genetic profile. And in this position, you can make a hundred and $63,000 a year. Now the skills you need for this are a strong background in genetics, excellent communication skills, empathy, and proper education and certification in genetic counseling. Now typically you are going to have to have at least a master's degree in something like genetic counseling, 
You're also gonna have to complete supervised clinical training, and you're gonna have to get a certification from the American Board of Genetic Counseling if you live in the USA. So there is a pretty high barrier to entry here. But the pros are you get to make a positive impact on individuals' health and the health of their entire family. You have high earning potential and stability, and you can actually work remotely, surprising enough, with this position. Some of the cons here are you have to deal with emotionally challenging situations and discussing sensitive topics. There's extensive education and training required to enter the field. And and you have to stay up to date with the latest genetic research. So overall, I think this is a super cool career. I think there's a lot of advancement to be made in this field. I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10 opportunity score. If you wanna check out 21 more high paying work from home jobs, I actually made a list and a lot of those are actually more on the entry level side of things. So they're easier to get into kind of at the entry level. And you can check that out by clicking right here.